Lady Wu I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And I want to talk about what's happening over there in England with the British royal family. Because what we're witnessing is the downfall of an evil institution. Dr. Martin Luther King said, The arc of the universe is long, but it leans towards justice. Sometimes people think they've gotten away with evil. And so they just keep on doing it and keep on doing it. And other people feed into it. But they, they got by, but they didn't get away. Because the universe that we call God of the Most High is always sitting high and looking low as we say in church. So they got by for many centuries, but they didn't get away. This is a picture of the most senior members of the British royal family today. King Charles and his wife Camilla out in front, William and Kate and all the rest. This family's lineage has been in power in England for over a thousand years. And in that time, they have gained a tremendous amount of wealth, power, and influence throughout the world. They have gone through a period of absolute monarchy, divine rights of kings, where they could do whatever they wanted to do, and nothing was questioned. They have enjoyed that privilege for over a thousand years. White supremacy. This is what white supremacy looks like. These people, their ancestors, might well have given white supremacy its name. This is the representation of the British Empire. There was a saying many years ago that the sun never sets on the British Empire. You want to know what that means? Because England is just a small little country, an island really, over there in Europe. But they were very, very powerful. And what that saying meant was they had gone all over the world, plundering and pillaging and taking and conquering other people, black, brown, red, yellow, you name it. They came in and they took over the resources of that country and set themselves up as the king or the queen of that country. They colonized Africa, Asia, Australia, North America, South America, and all of those islands in between. They were the king of those countries. And nothing they did was wrong. They could do whatever they wanted to do. Divine rights of kings, meaning that God gave them the right to do whatever they wanted to do. This is the British royal family. England, also known as Great Britain, put its stamp on America from the beginning. It was Britain who brought the first unfree Africans to this country and helped to start slavery in America. This is said by Professor Cassandra Newby Alexander, a historian at Norfolk State University in Virginia. So they started slavery in America. Everything that America created was from the English, including slavery, including laws on which slavery and inequality were built. It all came from England. It came from the English system. So systemic racism in our laws, in our practices, and in our culture comes from England. So that's their contribution to us. The greed and pillaging of the British is centuries old. So I'll just have to pinpoint it somewhere. So I'll start with Queen Elizabeth the first. In 1600, she granted a British slave trader 
a charter to go into Africa and start buying and auctioning slaves. And that began the rise of the Great British Empire because once they went into Africa and started robbing and pillaging and plundering Africa and her natural resources, they became filthy rich. And that's when they began to build these big palaces like this, Buckingham Palace, which started out as being a rich person's mansion. But after they got rich from robbing and pillaging all over the world, they had money to build these huge palaces where all of them could live in ex where all of them could live in extravagant apartments and ride around in these fancy carriages, waving to the people and flaunting all of their wealth, wealth that was stolen. And we can only guess at how much land was taken, how many natural resources were taken, how many cultures were destroyed, and how many lives were destroyed for them to build this kind of power and wealth. And this is the new King Charles. Now look at the crown sitting on top of his head. That crown is made of jewels that were stolen from Africa and India. And they want their jewels back, by the way. So the British royal family has a history of conquest going all over the world, destroying people's culture, taking their land and their resources, and calling them their own. They are known for plundering and pillaging all over the world. But they're also known for something else. This is Henry VIII. He was the King of England from 1509 to 1547. He is the father of Elizabeth I. Henry VIII had six wives. He divorced two. He killed two. One died and one miraculously managed to live after he died, so he didn't kill or divorce her. But the main role of a king's wife is to produce a son and then another son, an heir and a spare. Prince Charles was married to Diana. She produced William and Harry, the heir and the spare. Once he got that out of the way, he was ready to put Diana aside and go back and get the woman he really wanted, which is what he did. They do what they want to do. And if you create a problem, which is what Diana was doing by being more popular than they were and talking out of school like Harry is doing, well, we know what ended up happening to her. So they have that in their history. You know, you told the line or else because they do what they want to do. Now we come to Kate Middleton. Kate Middleton did something that doesn't work for most women. She laid up with the man for 10 years before he married her. They met when they were in college. They lived in the same co-ed apartment complex or dormitory complex. And they started dating and being together in college. They went through college. He went through the military. He went through some other kind of training. At a point, they broke up, but the British people had fallen in love with Kate, and the royal family operates on what the British public thinks. So after about 10 years, pressure was on Prince William to marry Kate, and he said from the outset he was not going to wear a wedding band, which he doesn't, and after they had their children, he was going to pretty much do what he wanted to do. Now, they said that not in those exact words, but close enough. And that is exactly what he's doing. He got the heir, the spare, and a girl. And they've already passed a law in England that the oldest child will become the heir, whether it's a girl or a boy. So he has done his job with Kate. Now, according to the tabloids, William has the woman that he wants to spend the rest of his life with. And Kate is in the way. Now that's what's being said. I'm repeating what they're reporting. But that's the way it seems. But it seems like Kate is not going to go away without a fight because 
She's got used to riding around in those buggies and waving and living in palaces and having all these servants and having everything at her fingertips. So she doesn't want to go away. So now she's either disappeared or she's in a coma or she's hiding out at her mama's house. Nobody knows where Kate is. So it appears that William is still thinking that he can do what he wants to do. So something happened between him and Kate Middleton between December 28th and now. And nobody really knows what happened to her. So after they came out with that report about her having planned abdominal surgery and she's going to have to stay in the hospital for two weeks and nobody will see her before Easter, then everybody started thinking, what kind of surgery was that? Nobody stays in the hospital that long. This woman is in the British royal family. She has the best of medical care. So what's wrong with her? It's been over two months and nobody has seen hide or hair of Kate. And then the other day, it seemed like somebody had taken some kind of a very unprofessional picture of her in a car with her mother that everybody said, that's not her, that's not her. And then they put out this phony picture a few days ago. And even the news people said, this is phony. And they pulled it back. So people are now asking, where is Kate? Where is Kate? But it seems like now she could use some rescuing because nobody seems to know where she is. Maybe it's a big hoax. Maybe she's just hiding out because she doesn't want to be served divorce papers. Because that's what they say is about to happen. That's where they're headed. So anyway, the bottom line is that this is very unusual behavior for this family. And they have lost control of the narrative in the past. They would have had control of the narrative. And whatever they said was it. But now we've got social media and people are saying something's not right here. But what it is, it's just the unraveling of this institution. It has run its course. It doesn't serve the public anymore. So it's useless in, in truth. It's, it has become a useless, self-indulgent institution of people who are basically upholding white supremacy. That's basically all it is at this point because they're not helping anybody. So anyway, we shall see how this ends. But I believe we are witnessing the downfall of an evil institution. It always takes a long time for these things to completely dissolve. Unless you do like the French and just cut off people's heads or do like the Russians and line them all up and before a firing squad. I don't think that'll happen. But I do believe we're witnessing the end of this institution and it's not a minute too soon. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video. And as always, have a great day.